والتر نش ریشرهدو ده کورال اتماس ایگور ل ایرگرید به میسی ل دین کالول اون کومن لو کلاس گیل اگه ستا سولیگم کومنی شیف تنی باش I remember saying to him, this is some trip, Sean Murray. This is unbelievable <laughs> shit. He says, he says well, it's not a trip, Muggsy, it's, it's a tour. And I was like, no, but you know what I mean? He says, no, I don't. So proud there again, D&G. How are they again, D&G? That's from Cavana. Yeah, it's L&G anyway, Larry and Galvin anyway. That's the, that's the brand name anyway. This season, the show is brought to you by Airgrid. Proud sponsors of the GAA Football Under-20 All-Ireland Championship. Not only is Airgrid delivering a cleaner energy future by future-proofing Ireland's electricity grid, they're invested in the performance of young GAA players that help them grow, powering forward. Agastha Faltaroiv Harnash Kri Koralet Moss. I'm uh, delighted to be back with Koralet Moss in association with Airgrid. Delighted to have the great Benny Tier. As our first guest, we said we'd, we'd start strong, Benny. We, we, we won a good one, so we said we'd start strong. So that's what we're doing. Uh, I've, I've met Benny a good few years and ago, and I, I, I know him a good while, and he's a gas man. I, I've done a good few uh, Q&As, I suppose. The last one was that, Benny, you, you, um, I was introduced as, as winning an, a footballer of the year, and you were standing behind me in earshot, and you just cried, geez, it must have been a lean year that year. <laughs> How are you, Benny? I'm all good. I'm all good, Moss. And I suppose lean is not an adjective you'd use to spray me in any realm either. So uh, <laughs> you've got to come back with that one very easy. <laughs> I was thinking there coming down, uh, you didn't shed a tear, I suppose, when you saw Tyrone in trouble the last day. <laughs> Do you know what? I felt like a dairy man for, a, for about 45 minutes. Listen, I always like I always like the Jeromans. I always say they're equivalent to the English abroad. They're hated throughout the length and breadth of Ireland. But uh, no, I didn't. We didn't shed any tears. Maybe a bit of a shock. Um, I, I was expecting a decent performance, be there, you know. But I wasn't expecting the the victory and the magnitude and the way they went about their game and how easy it was and uh, how lethargic and how poor Tyrone looked after after the massive year last year. But uh, it was a strange result uh, because it was emphatic and um, it put Derry up there. Uh, Derry won't be mentioned as any contender. And Rory Gallagher got his plan right on it. Uh, a good result for football, you know. And I think, I think we're beginning to see a change in the realm and, and, and teams making their mark. They have been sort of knocking on the door in the league this year, but it still was a shock, a big shock. I'm sure it's still been felt in Jerome. Not that I'll take any great hurt on that. <laughs> what is it, Benny? And what is it about the championship? Like, what is... I don't know how anybody could beat anybody. I know there are certain games that you could could predict, but most of the time, there's always just this ferocity above there. What's your like? What would your earliest memory be of Ulster Championship? My my probably my earliest memory was playing Tyrone in the Athletic. Uh, I went to the league match this year between Armagh and Tyrone. It's great now to be going to these matches. It's one of the biggest matches we went in the league. And it was a strange dynamic because I arrived an hour before the throw-in and I couldn't get a seat. There was a stand room only. And I played, I think it was 89 or 90, I think the kind of me made our debut the same day. And there was about the six or seven hundred at it. You know that sort of way, you know, on a pitch, on a pitch that looked like it had been ploughed by cattle about three weeks before. But for me, obviously, it was a massive a massive encounter we played Tyrone and we beat Tyrone. And the, <laughs> the joy uh, that I felt that day was was the same as I felt uh, a few months earlier when we beat them in the league this year. Uh, it, it, I think it's always a big scalp. Any, any game in Ulster, I don't know what it is, we're twisted people up here tomorrow. So we don't have that Jamaican approach to life that you carry people have. We're better and we're twisted. And, and we'll be showing that in the electrical polls tomorrow when we're all voting uh, about protocols and things. Oh, I, I think I think football means a lot to us up here, and um, we take it. We take it. Sometimes we take it a wee bit more serious than we should. Uh, but I suppose we've been for years. We've always had some semi isolated maybe up here, and when we do something up here or we win anything, it's not it's nearly seen as oh, there's the Nordies that give it a work up there now. Do you know what I mean? And sometimes you don't get the credit that maybe we deserve. But listen, I'm not that type of character. I've never felt that, but it is felt in some in some aspects. But 
we take our football very serious and every match is a local rivalry, you know, and it's, uh, you know, we have Down, Tyrone, Derry, uh, Monaghan beside us here across the border where we, where we like to deal with our, with, with our diesel and stuff like that. You know, there's always that, there's always that, uh, that rivalry, but I, listen, I enjoyed every bit of it, you know. It's not like Kerry and Cork every year. We have a four or five boys that we like to be at, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Was it, was it, did you come up to the ranks, Benny, in terms of minors? You made your debut 97, 98, or 89, 88, 89, was it? Yeah, I, I did the whole lot. I went on the 16s, minors, on the 21s. St. Coleman's probably brought me into football, into that realm of football and Coleman's in the area, I went there and I was going to be a midfielder and I ended up in goals. So I've been deluded all my life to Moss, do you know what I mean? Uh, I actually got picked for goals one day, I turned up for a third year match and the, the team was being named and there was two subs and I was one of them and somebody, the, the manager was a man called Father McCrory and he says, does anybody want to do goals? Do you know what I mean? And I looked at the other boy and I said, oh, sure, I'll do it. Hey, break it. I'll go in. I think the ball hit me everywhere, Tomas. It hit me in the arse, the head, the elbow. But since then, uh, since then, that's where I've been. Now, I played outfield. I played outfield for Arma. And I played, I played outfield for my club um, and on the 20, I'm an under 21 championship went inside playing midfield for my club. Uh, and then I got comfortable in the, I got comfortable in the goalkeeper spot and I realised if I was going to make it in county level, Probably going to be with the number one on my back, and listen, I'm, I'm I was very thankful and very lucky to have all all that happened to me. But it was it was a journey that maybe a lot of people didn't take. I wasn't a naturally born goalkeeper, but I fitted that role very well, and I actually after you know. Well, we 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 were cursing you after after zero two. I can assure you. Um, <laughs> could it, you saw you were there through the golden era, Benny. But how was it when you went in first to the Armagh seniors? You weren't. Top of the pile in Ulster. Who was top of the pile? Where were you in the pecking order? What was it like getting in? I know you, like, at the time in 2002, you were probably regarded the most professional team in the country. What was it like in 89? I always said it was much more fun when we were shaped, man. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> we had no aspirations and very little expectations in the early days. It was... You know, obviously, it's a great honour to play for your county. It always was, and uh, you know, we, we we took it seriously, but it was not to to the levels. You know, I was thirty three in oh two, so I've been to the, I've been to Division Four and Division Three, and I've been to the. I think we played. I played Kilkenny in football. So did I. Yeah, <laughs> and score the score line to Mars was two twenty to zero zero, uh, and I I think there was about thirteen or fourteen in that game. You know, we. They, they probably could have got a game, some of them. Um, but, you know, we've been to the lowest to the low. And maybe, you know, in O2, I suppose it's not, it's game where we're now really famous one in a row. So from somebody like me, I'm like Paddy McKeever, who came in maybe a year or two beforehand, all he knew was success. I, I knew what it was like uh, training for seven, eight months a year, one championship match out, gone. Uh, that had happened for four or five years in a row. We got some serious tankings. I remember Derry coming up and stuff on us in our man, things like that there, when they were going well, the Henry Downies of the world were playing. We got some serious beatings and some huge disappointments. So probably in 02, Tomas, you know, when, Ker when and the likes of yourself and Kerry and the Dubs and these, the Meads of this world were brought up expecting success, it meant a hell of a lot to us because we had never experienced it and, and everybody was talking about the fact we hadn't experienced it because we hadn't got the bottle and we hadn't got the character. And as you said, you know, we were very professional. We did everything right. And it was building. It was building. You know, we were, we were not on the door. But I suppose, as people will tell you, the hardest thing to do when you're knocking on that door is to actually open it and walk in. And we were very fortunate. We were, we were blessed that when we did get to that one final, that we did win it. Because it's a, it's, it's a long, hard road as a county footballer as well, you know, and anybody else who plays it. But I wouldn't begrudge anybody the chance of walking through that door. Believe it or not. I, I I always look. I'm, I'm watching footballers now. Footballers much better than I ever was or ever could dream of being. And I don't see them walking through that door and up those steps in Crook Park. And I, I genuinely feel for them because I think anybody who puts nine or ten years of their life on hold, the county players do now, deserve their day in the sun. And I don't. 
I don't, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get annoyed when anybody gets up and wins something like that. They, they deserve it, you know. It's, it's. Um, I, do, I totally agree. I, I think players are putting in nowadays is absolutely phenomenal. They put their life on hold in every aspect of it, Benny. You guys, the guys that were there early on had to be. I always hear the Dubs, the great Dubs team. There was a lot of them that went through pain before they achieved success. I know you had the likes of Brian Fenton, who only lost a game after year six or seven of his intercounty career. But you guys must have been vital to keep the younger lads at a level pitch and tell them this is there's there's danger lurking around the corner here. Well, there's, there, there's, there's, there is that aspect to it, and I suppose... You you would know as anyone as well as anybody else. You need thirty different characters there. You need you need the Joker, Jesus, the Grains. You don't want fifteen Benny Timmies even win fact all. I can tell you that. But uh, you do need. But I remember I remember um, the Cross and Glenn boys have come in, uh, and they were very young and very inexperienced. And I remember we were talking about we were playing Derry, and I think Brian McLennan was the manager of the team. And he's, we were having a talk before, the week before or something. He says, you know, we haven't beaten Derry in five years, but, you know, or five championship matches or something like that. And it was a big game coming up. And I think it was John McEntee, he was only 19, said, you, you haven't beat Derry. We, we've never been beat by Derry. We beat them in the minors. Uh, he says, and if you continue with that logic, you'll never beat them. He was only 19. So, yes. They were in experience, and when the crossboys came in, and when the crossboys finally bought into the community as well, because they were so so big that you know buying into the Armagh team wasn't necessarily on their radar. And you see it in other kinds of successful club teams; they they don't necessarily buy in. When they bought in to Armagh, that that level of exuberance and that level of uh, of professionalism that they'd experienced in club, and also they were winning. And so when they came in on board. We, we, and the experienced members and the boys that had been there, the Meanies, the McGrains, the, 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 you know, the, the Marsons of this world who would grace any county team, then it all fitted in. And then the team was solid and it was there. I mean, you, it was there, you know. I, um, I often think that period, like that was a period where, where Tyrone were <laughs> unbelievably dominant and the Arma and Tyrone were the two strongest teams in the country possibly and in that time I, I didn't realise I thought it was five you won seven Ulsters mm. in a period of about eight nine years did you? Yeah that something was like that. absolute that was a time when when the Ulster finals were being brought to Crow Park that was like the rivalry you had Benny with Tyrone that time. I know it's fierce health, you know, and I know yourself and Peter are a great buddy and there's great respect between the two, but that fucking rivalry that time was savage, wasn't it? I, I can remember, I can remember actually, you know, when I, I retired to, to Tyrone our mama and it was one of those massive. And you were nearly wary of, any, of anything happening. You were wary maybe about the crowd trouble and things. And it never transpired into that. And some of my best friends are from Tyrone and, you know, I've done more gigs in Tyrone than I've done anywhere else. And I, I don't know why. I think they like being insulted, but uh, and I love insulting them. But there was a, there was a, uh, you know, a severe there uh, because you know yourself when you two bulls laughing horn, and you two teams that are a similar standard, and a similar rivalry, and that yeah, it's that genuine bit of hatred and that genuine bit of competitive spirit that you thrive on and I thrive on, and anybody who's played twenty football thrives on. You know, you are going to get maybe not the prettiest of games, but you're going to get. You're going to get some of the best games. I know some, at one time, it was described as puke football, as the great Spillant had called it. But if you look back in those games and the intensity and the rivalry and the scores and the hits, you know, you nearly for those days again, there doesn't seem to be as much of it now than there was then. They were great games. And, and when, you talk, when you look at them from outside, we were involved and we weren't maybe seeing how good they were. Because if you lost, you'd lost everything. But when you look back and there's some massive encounters there, some brilliant matches with Tyrone. And maybe that's why, you know, there is that that acknowledgement. I think the Dublin and the Meads and the Kerrys, they all acknowledge each other because they've gone there and they've done that and they battle against each other and they consistently did that. Our man Tyrone did it for about six or seven years. So there's a healthy respect there. It mightn't be said too often, it mightn't be written too often, but I I, I can tell you there's a healthy respect for both our man Tyrone. And then boys, 
maybe in about five or six years t- time we'll meet up and share pints together you know and do things like that there but I do with the, I do with anybody but uh, <laughs> <laughs> with me. I was going to say um when like <clears throat> The twenties and the Sigerson. Did you play a Sigerson, by the way, Benny? Oh, I did. I, I was part. Of, I was part of the first St Mary's team ever to win the Sigerson. St Mary's Teacher Training College. Yeah, because uh, they won. They won one mate, not too long ago, uh, four or five years under Paddy Taddy. And that's right. Team. Eighty-nine. We 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 beat uh, we beat Cork UCC in the final up in Belfast, and Mar- Morris fits for his jaw broke. <laughs> Next. Absolutely, I think it was on the way to the match. Uh, no, uh, a robust tackle, a robust tackle by uh, a man, and actually Danny Quinn. Do you remember Danny played for Derry? Yeah, yeah. Back, great fella. Uh, Danny got the blame for it. It, it. Actually, when we look back at the video, it wasn't. It wasn't one of those uh, job breaking challenges. It was just a, a, a hit. But I think Danny got the blame for it because he was in the muzzle at the time and something that there. No, uh, guys like Ivan Ahern, I don't know if you remember Ivan Ahern playing Tomas. I know uh, the name, I, ne- I, never, I can't picture him. Yeah, uh, boys like that. I just remember a few names, but they had a, they had a star to the team and we were we were only old teachers who were just thrown on, just made about. But listen, if you look back at that team, there was Charlotte Bourne, Shamey Downey, uh, Pat Canavan, you know, uh, some great, we had 13 inter-county players playing at that. John Rehill and uh, Fergal McCann from Fermanagh. You know, Iggy Gallagher, Tyrone, Maliki O'Rourke, Maliki O'Rourke, Danny Quinn. So uh, th- there was a, a number of players we had. Barton from Derry. Uh, we had a great team at that time, and we were the first r- ranch team ever to uh, win the Sigerson. You, uh, I, I don't know what Q and A we were at. Was was Canavan in college with you? Did you wake up inside in the bed with Canavan one morning? <laughs> You know, the only reason I'm going to tell this is because we, we weren't at a Gaelic function. If we were at a Gaelic function, I, I, this wouldn't have happened. Uh, we actually got railroaded into playing the uh, Collingwood Cup for the Samiri soccer team, which, uh, and we were playing, <laughs> we were playing in a place called Bangor. And uh, unlike Sigerson, where you would have taken it very professionally, the very idea that God, Mr. Canavan, was going to play soccer. Oh, we were Radar, Tomas. We weren't letting on to anybody, and I had never played a match. They'd take me out that morning and fire corners in at me to see to see how I would handle them. But we were actually playing UC Drew. Nil all. It, it, the chess would have taken it over on Sky Sports. It was that boring. There was two shots in it. But uh, we had a few sherbets that evening uh, uh, in celebration. I, I think I woke up in a single bed with none other than Peter Canavan as alias God. <laughs> and uh, the, the, the shocking uh, statistic of this is a free double bed on the, on the other side of the room. So I don't know how it, it ends up. Last in. Now, I do tell the I do tell the arm that I said to him when I woke up, uh, Peter, let's be frank. And he says, no, Benny, it's my turn to be frank. But I, I, I only tell that in jest. I don't think that really happened. <laughs> <laughs> but I... Very few people can claim to have slept with God, apart from his good wife. Uh. <laughs> no better man. And a nice, tidy man. He wouldn't take up much space, I'd say. No, no, no. He said he was warm all night. That's all he said. He said I was comfortable. Uh, yeah. Uh, he, took up a lot of, he took up a lot of space in Crook Park again, just the wee here. But uh, not, not in that single bed, No. <laughs> When getting back to Armagh, Benny, and I, I know you spoke about the, the younger lads that came through and Airgrid obviously sponsored the, the championship. And if you have a successful 20 and it was 21 at that time, team, it feeds in. When did you cop as a team and as a group? Whoa. Because I know you played us in 2000 in the semi final and we drew and yeah. the right cracker of a match there. Was it a couple of years previous to that, or when did you know? Yeah, we can think big. I think ninety nine, when we had the likes of the Cross and Glenman and, and a young Paddy McKeever who came in, and we had we had stalwarts like I, I, uh, Cattle Rock and boys of that had been on on, the, on that team for a long time, and who, who were very good footballers. And so we were knocking on the door, not so we weren't making the breakthrough. We got to the we got to the final in ninety nine, and we were playing a down team. Ross Carr and the guys were playing, you know, they were probably, they were probably on, on the other side of the court. 
down always beat our man and, and you know and, and had beaten us for a long time and we give them an awful hiding that day in Thomas. It was it was I think Oshin Oshin tried to chip the goalkeeper, I think he tried to chip uh, Mickey McVeigh later on in the game. It was that comfortable. We'd never experienced comfort like that before and uh, it was breaking it was the breaking of the ground. It was probably the the emphatic the victory was as well that made us think here, hold on a second. Whilst I would have taken anybody's right arm for the title um, after 10 years at the, uh, in goals, I, I, I realised and we realised then there's maybe more than an Ulster in this team. And, you know, have the calibre of people like McGrain and McGinney and Marsden, uh, Aidan O'Rourke, the McNulty's, these boys were driven. These boys were... Sorry, mentally, probably mentally more professional than anybody I, I'd ever encountered in, in, in work, car, and sport. And, you know, you would be driven on. And even though maybe I was coming to the end of my career, it was, it was a case of, listen, I'm going to go, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ride on this stuff here because these boys are serious, like, and they were putting in serious work and work maybe other teams weren't putting in. And we knew, we, you know, there's a big thing in Armagh that Armagh should have won more. And I, I, I would say that's true. You know, there's, there's no doubt about it. For the amount of effort and the amount of professionalism and the amount of training and and then the innovative way we broke ground, like you know, I remember us going to La Manga in two thousand and two for a training camp. You know, it would have been unlike a Kerry training camp. I can assure you, it was absolutely. I thought it would be like a Kerry training camp. You know, we were in La Manga, five golf courses round the place. I never got hit in the ball. There'd been eighty pubs round the place. And I never got taken a beer. But it was that. It was that type of trip. We when we got there, we decided as a team we want to have a beer, you know. And you know, any trip you went on like that, you would have a beer, you know. Was... Were you were you privately disgusted? Like I remember, we went on those two, and there always be one fella put up a hand and he'd say, "Do we do we bring the t- do we bring the, the going out clothes?" <laughs> In other words, are we having a few beers? Are we having a night out? You mustn't well, disgust it then. <laughs> Listen, I I I was the man who knocked the more managers doors. You know. Are we allowed out? <laughs> you know, like we child. Uh, I was always the go for you. Tell me, you you the, the letter said you go because you, know, you were away with you. But no, uh, this was a trip that uh, you know we were laughed at when we came back and to you know uh, the Tyrone supporters. I remember we, and we played Tyrone the first game that year in the preliminaries. You know, so it was do or day. And uh, I remember when we were there's a wee trim pitch beside the pitch and we were coming back up to the field. Place was packed and the throne supporters were shouting, You should have gone to Lourdes, you should have gone to Lourdes, Manga. And you were feeling that there was an impression out there who do they think they are going to the Manga? You know? But when you look back, and I'm sure you can look back on things this year, there are wee mitigating factors. It takes 30 things to go right for you to win an Atlanta. It takes your county board way behind you. It takes a, you know, you could have a bad run with injuries that could cost you the thing. You could, uh, you could have a bad training camp, you could have a bad challenge result. Everything was going right for us. And we only just got over the line against Tyrone, you have to remember. And we only just got over the line against Sligo in the quarterfinal. So there were so many things that went for us. You know, we went to the replay with Tyrone, we went to the replay with Sligo. There was a point at halftime against you, it looked like we were dead and buried, you know. You know, we just were on top. I, I, I can remember thinking at the time, my God, you're coming out as And it just, it changed. But we had a year where things went right, and we had a year where finances and everything people were looked after. We were given the best of equipment. We were given the best of treatment. And, you know, we had a lot of leaders on the team as well. And uh, everything just clicked that, you know. You were credited, and rightly so, I think, um, in bringing a professionalism to the to the GA, to Intercounty. He obviously wanted it so badly. He, he did anything he could to, to better yourselves. And... You look at any intercounty team now, Benny, and they're as well prepared as any professional soccer or, or rugby team. Did you struggle? And I know that I'm going to ask you to. Did you struggle at the beginning uh, when Joe came in? I know he brought in a nutritionist, and <laughs> I only I've heard this story before, but I want you to regale it if you can, because I never laughed as hard. I actually had to go to the toilet after when you call this one above. <laughs> well, you know yourself, Ross. He's new in it. And when you're an old dog like me, you know, I used to love to see these psychologists come and I go, oh, there's a wee chance for me to play a wee bit of mind games. Or, and I landed one night to train and we were, we were getting, and Dermot Marsden comes out, he goes, watch yourself, Tierney. There's a day at a nutritionist and she's interviewing all the players. 
And I went, right. And Kieran Hughes came in and he goes, say, Benny, don't put it on your drink. And I says, what do you mean? He said, I told her I would take four pints a night out. And she looked at me and wrote it down. And he said, oh, don't worry. I've met, I've met the likes of this before. I'll get the game, you know. So I sauntered in. And uh, I sat down and she says, what would your breakfast be? And I said, oh, muesli. Muesli with a skin milk, you know. <laughs> so she took another look at me, you know, and your dinner, oh, just a chicken salad, you know, something, something light and oh, everything was perfect, you know. <laughs> and I thought you were looking at an Olympic swimmer and said this me chubby ginger fella sitting in the front of her. So, and she says, what about alcohol? I says, wouldn't bother with it that much, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Look like the taste of it, <laughs> you know. So, I could hear the boys giggling behind the screens, you know. And I was going, she said, What would you drink? And I said, I've got two or three pints of shandy or something like that there, nothing, nothing too elaborate now. But she finished with me anyway. The next minute, big Paul Hardy was coming in from Cross, and I said, Don't tell Hardy nothing, let him in, let him go in there. So, big, <laughs> big Paul, the most affable, lovely character you ever met. Me. I'm sure you've met him, the most big civil man. And, Great crack and a member of the goalkeepers union, so special. So uh, he goes in, and I all the way here his son. What would the crack is? Oh, Jesus, I'd have the fray now, I'd have a good old fray. And on the way down to the walk van, we'd pull into an old apple green there, and I'd have the old cowboy supper, and I'd have, I'd have the lunch, then I'd have the dinner when I would come home. And then, sure, we'd have to feed after the train, and you know, and, and she was locking out, going, there's about 8,000 calories there, you know. And then, uh, and what about alcohol? Oh, Jesus, he says, I love it. <laughs> and she says, what about on a night? And he says, well, on a session, like on a session. And she went, well, whatever that is. Oh, he says, out of, out of 13 or 14 pints of beer, and to which you read, Smithwick's daughter, Smithwick's daughter, a couple of Volvos, a couple of Volvos. And she, he said, vodkas um, on a good night. I'd finish it off with a slippery nipple, which is a lovely cocktail. So we were both laughing anyway. I said, I'm coming out of this like an angel. Thirty sold a farm down the lane. I'm, I'm coming out like an athlete. So Joe approached us uh, later on that evening, and he says, I was just talking to the diet and nutritionist. He says, you've made a big impression. Uh, boys, well done. And I was sort of sniggering to myself, going, well, I can't come out of this badly. And she said, uh, he's... The first bowl could come in as a compulsive player, and the second one's a rampant alcohol. <laughs> so, between, between, we didn't put it all over a race, put it that way at Mars. But this is, they're the stories, and uh, you know, you know yourself, if I didn't have the crack or I didn't have that, you know, the go to train and the enjoyment, like if it was down to train and I'd never be part of the county team because I hated it, but I loved the whole periphery of it and, and the crack and, and, and the fun that we had over the years as well. Like, you, you said it perfectly there, like, you probably wouldn't go back if the crack and in the enjoyment. And you have, I've seen you together a good few times, you have a great balance in it, you know, you've got, I presume, like, what was McGinney like as a leader, Benny? I know he was your, your, your captain and your main man in terms of leading on the pitch, even though, like you said, I always say the best teams you ever faced against brilliant forwards. I'll always remember Ronan Clark's performance in the 0-2 final. He was outstanding. Uh, you had Mars and you had and geez, you, you, there was always the McEntees. Like, it was phenomenal how many good... Tyrone were the only team at the time with as good forwards as Armagh. Yeah. But what were they... Like, that mix you were on about, if you didn't have the madness and the young fellas and the older lads, was McGeaney the main man in terms of, of, of off the field and... Yeah, listen, I think Bugini missed about three training sessions in the 13 years I was there, and it felt like a night off. It felt like you were, because it, you felt, you know, like the principal was watching you all the time in the school, that you couldn't get away with anything. But not only that there, you wanted to train. It wasn't a case of him roaring and screaming. At he just set standards that were, you know, that you trade to, you never got there. I know, Percy never got there, but like they used to pair me with him in some of the gym work. And, you know, I'd walk out crippled because I just tried to do as much as I could with him, like without busting out laughing because the two physiques would be totally opposite ends of the spectrum. But him and you had McGrain as well, who, who could lead it, who, you know, it was like another McGinney and, you know, they were 
there weren't there weren't these people who roared and shouted and screamed at you. But the day set levels that you had to try to get to, you like to Damon Martin, who was an unbelievable athlete, probably doesn't get the credit he, he deserved over the years as well. And, and the men's, as you said, you had McConville now. McConville would have been in my realm of training as well, you know. Um, <laughs> you know he was more time on, on, on a, a massive bench than he did on, on any training public field, and probably because he would have had to mark Francie Belly when he was training. But, uh, you know, the, you had the different, that different breed of people. And you had the loud people like me, and, and you had the very quiet people like Andy McCann, who never who already spoke, but was an exceptional footballer. And like Andy has drifted into retirement, and you never see Andy or hear of Andy. But without Andy McCann, we were nothing. He was that type player as well. And he uh, he just did his talking on the field. And uh, I remember one night <laughs> before an Ulster <coughs> Championship match, Brian McAllen, he has to talk for five five minutes what they're going to do tomorrow. I'm going to start with you, Tierney, you know. Nice is what Jesus said. Uh, I hope to keep a clean sheet. Uh, I hope to get uh, our kickouts. I hope to find as many Armagh people with our kickouts, with the kickouts. I'm very in the kickouts. Um, keep everybody on toes, the defence on the toes, and keep everything positive, in a positive mindset. And he says, you have 28 seconds still to talk. And poor Andy McCann, who, who hardly spoke, said, turn for to me. <laughs> He says, if Tierney can't do five minutes, how am I going to manage it? You know, it was that time we had serious leader. Talk to McClarkie too there, Tomas. I, I think if you analyse the difference, I thought Clark was that year. Um, he just brought a whole new dimension into the full forward. Stevie was outstanding. McConville was outstanding. But Clark in at full forward was a target man that, you know, he, that was his position. He, he, he had hands, he had feet, he had vision. And he, him, Marsden, uh, Clark, McDonald, uh, and, uh, and McConville were on an equal wavelength as well. And as you said, probably with O'Neill and, and, and Canavan and Mulligan and Embrace were the only team that probably that, that talent, that forward, had that, as many talented forwards. You know, and, you know, many, many of the time I'm, I've tried to replicate that and it, we're struggling at the minute, you know, just to get that. You need four in pot three, you had four possibly. But we had them. And we John Mack, who, who was who was a soul, but he was able to slide. He looked, he looked slow. He looked he nearly looked slow, but he was he, he was he was severely effective and severely strong and he took no prisoners as well. So we had we had a damn good forward But more importantly than that, we had leaders and we had boys who bought into that. When when we saw that we were gonna do or were able to do something, they all bought in and it was it was a great time to be involved in county football. Jesus, you had, <clears throat> I was just thinking there, uh, uh, you had a savage fucking defence out in front of you. Yeah. You no Rourke, who was probably the quietest of them. You had McGeaney, the McNulty's, the Bowl Francie. I yes. had that function we were at lately, that function was the first time I've ever seen Francie Bellew speak. <laughs> Francie, what, no, what, what a performer. What a performer for ye, Benny. He was huge, wasn't he? Listen, he became an icon in Armagh. It was a, I don't know, it was, a, it, was a, it was just phenomenal. But I think it was the fact that he, he was so quiet, you know, and the fact that he had only appeared on the scene and his, and, his, and his pattern of play probably went back to the 50s or 60s, the way France he played, because he only knew, he, he wasn't anybody but all the races. He wasn't trying to do anything. He wasn't, nobody tried to change him. We knew what you were going to get. If the ball broke, France would. Would, would be on top of it. He'd be on top of you. He would he would he would hit you at Spain the same way he would hit you in a football match. But it, he wasn't dirty. People had this sort of impression that France was a dog and, a, and like a like a like a former McLean's type character who was you know robust and physically he wasn't like that. But he when he hit you you stayed hit if you know what I mean and uh, a very quiet character who had only just come into the pan. You know, and that's that's the other thing. France had only just joined the panel and probably wouldn't have joined the panel if any other one or France would never have come. And he wouldn't have been there the other night, only Joe Kieran and rang him to be there the other night. You know, that's the type of France. He's got a hugely effective and a, a great lad, you know, and uh, you know, everybody plays their part and, and you're right, the Aiden Rock, Francie, the McNulty's, Andy McCann, McGinney, like you know, whenever you were in trouble, um maybe the game was tight. McGinney would take a look at me. We played club football together, you know. McGinney would take a look at me, and I knew what was I knew what I was to do. I used to put the ball above McGinney. Now he wasn't the biggest character in the world, but if it broke, 
I'd say nine teams out of ten, we only came out with it. You know, and he did it for us at club, but he did it for us at county as well. And there was that the two McNulty's were my club mates as well. So that, I suppose when you have four of, of your seven who who have grown up together, they played there's a trust there. You would have known playing with your brothers as well, Mark, and playing, you know, you nearly know what you're gonna get and, and we, we utilize that in in our defence very sure in trust him on the pitch, I wouldn't trust him anywhere else, Benny. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't. I can begin here. So, the two McNaughties are going to let them in the back door. I'll tell you this. <laughs> Benny, didn't you win a, and an Ulster club in the middle of, was that in the middle of, of cross dominance? That was prior to the cross dominance. In fact, many would say the way of the cross dominance, the fact that we won an Ulster club, but uh, they were only, they were young at the time, the McEntees were only coming in. We, we had, uh, we, we, that was the only county title they ever won. We were an all in an Ulster Cup. But we had come cross and all to dominate football and club football for also 15 years nearly. And then their success is unquantifiable. But our story was that in 1985, we were second from the bottom of Division 4 in Armagh football. And in 1995, we were Ulster Cup champions. Yeah. So there's a couple of us have Division 4, Division 3, Division 2, Division and junior, intermediate, senior. So I know I always say this to cross people to annoy them. The range of our medals is every bit as good as the qu- the quantity of their medals. I just do it to annoy them, just but I annoy a lot of people. But their their story is unique, but our story is unique as well, you know. And uh, it, it it's coming from where we were in 1985 to where we went in 1985 was a, was a massive achievement and something that when you know, when uh, when I think back on football, I don't I tend not to dwell on football too much. I'm I'm proud of that achievement as I am of any uh, Sigurdsons or Hogan's or anything like that there I'm as proud of that as I am of any of them The fans of Armagh Benny they're infatuated with their football they love their football absolutely uh, I've met a pile of them I know a pile of them and I, I'd have great time for them oh in the name of God but did you, it probably seeped in. I, I read somewhere who said that no matter what's written in the paper, you I think it was uh, Kieran Kingston or that said lately that no matter what's said in the papers, it seeps true to players. How did you keep a okay. lid on it? Because I suppose of all opposition outside of Ulster, he'd love to topple us in a in a final. So if the build up must have been massive. The build up the build up was we had to beat Dublin in the semi-final and we had to beat Kerry in the final. So like, we we were playing, we were, as you know, it's like we were we were shifting above our weight, so to speak, you know what I mean? We were having to go, we were having to go the right way. We weren't playing any any minnows to win on our island. And I think I remember Colin O'Rourke wrote in, in the Sunday Independent the day before we played Dublin that even the taxi drivers know that Dublin will beat our man, you know? And that was the lack of maybe respect that was granted us at the time. But the build-up, like I, you know me. I'm a so like I'm. I, I like to be. I like to be in the, in the middle of things. Like and it was, we were nearly cocooned away, <laughs> and I was, I was dying to see what was going on. You know, and and one of one of my, uh, you know, as a teacher as well in in my local primary school, you can imagine like what was going on, and so you were been trying to be shielded from all this. The likes of the likes of McGinny wouldn't want to be part of anything like that. There upon <laughs> keep me away from that. I wanted to be in the middle of it. But like I, I just I, I always think it would have been nice to be a fly on the wall to see what was happening. I know the excitement that was garnished uh, around the county. And when you meet any you meet people now and they still talk about those things, but look at children in the car getting the paint the car painted orange and white and the journey that they had and, and the, the five or six years that they were on the road at that time, where they just absolutely had a ball. My own family as well, you know, the times that they had gone to the matches and the excitement and things, you know, in Kerry it was it was nearly every year that was happening, but for our it was a it was a unique five or six years uh, at the top or dying in at the top table. So genuine supporters uh, had a ball, you know, because unlike previous years when they were when they were maybe driving down with a wee bit of hope, this time they were driving down with anticipation and maybe expectation. Uh, and uh, I would love as a supporter, you know. Uh, to get that feeling myself, you know, I'm going to the matches now, and yeah, we're having a bit of bad time of it recently. Like Donegal was a huge disappointment, but uh, it, it's great to to get into a car and meet people. You know, I met Mark McQuillan, you know, down there the last day we were there. Who I think he has five Railway Cup medals for Ulster. He played for Armagh, one of the best. And 
you know, we when we meet and you know this yourself, when you meet it's as if you've never split up. It's like it's like meeting family again. And the crack we had for an hour before the Donegal was was a lot more crack than we had during the game, I can tell you. But it's that type of uh, that's what that's what our games bring us. That you know, when you meet somebody and you can stand and talk for an hour and it feels like five minutes and you and you want to be there, you want to talk to them, and that's what that's what the that's what the game will that be anybody from Tyrone or that's there it's the same with yourself when we meet it's and we might have met each other before but we can talk for hours and hours of them a bit of times we had and the great and the great thing we did and i can i can embellish all the great things that i did <laughs> yeah, i was going to say um when that game was up for grabs you grabbed it and you deserve it, you it can you remember the initial the 10 i like that time benny i i i, I presume the pitch you didn't get time on the pitch. It was swarmed or whatever it was and it was swarmed fairly quickly in orange, I would imagine. I can't remember that myself, my own memory of that. Can you remember the, the half an hour after the final whistle well? Or did you soak in the victory or did you just go with I remember, I don't remember a lot. And that I, I kind of half regretted that I didn't enjoy it more. Did you enjoy it? I, don't, I, I, I did. I, I think... I was, I remember thinking Owen Brosnan went through for an equalising point at Tomas Bridge, the three or four minutes before time was up, and he he shot. And as a goalkeeper, you know when a ball's going over the bar or when a ball's going wide. And to me, it was going over the bar. My initial reaction was to run around to get the ball for a quick kicker. And I remember the umpire holding his hands out to say wide, and I, I started smiling. And I just said, early on it. Because to, in my mind, Brosnan shot was going over the bar. And I've only watched the game once during lockdown. And I, at that moment, I can remember sitting, sitting on the couch, smiling again, going, that was the moment for me that I knew our, our hand. There was a few pivotal moments during the game. And I think McGinney made a block in the second half. And Mike France Russell, I think Francie hit Mike France Russell a good old shoulder. And I remember thinking, Mate, these boys are a bit rattled. Do you know what? I, I started shouting that, you know, it's a rattle. But the aftermath, um, I was coming in. I remember an old man. There's a boy, a, a boy called Dominic Barnes, who who would, would have been in Kilkenny that day, Thomas, when the 13. And he was going around in an off. He didn't know where he was. And I remember grabbing him and I said, I said, Dominic, come on, come on. And I remember a lunatic called Lenny, who would have followed us for years, hit me on the shoulder. He hit me. He's only about four foot three, and he hit me on the shoulder. And he was roaring and crying. And I was leading Dominic and this door from me back, uh, called Lenny. And I says to Lenny, when he got off the field, I says, uh, you must have been near the goals when he says I was in the upper fusic. He jumped from the upper fusic to the lower fusic. You know, I, I remember a lot of, I remember, I don't like crowds, so I remember I said, I did not just stand for, to be standing beside McGinney as well. And it was, uh, I remember that. And I remember meeting family and friends, you know, when you go through out the back, you know, with the buses come in. I remember meeting the real family from Silverbridge, Jolly Real used to play up for, for our man, a very close friend of mine. I met him and his brothers. And just great moments, like, you know, and uh, I, 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 when you only get one of them, you tend to remember a lot more of them from us, you know, and uh, just great times. And I honestly feel, you know, with all the bravado and the humour and all that involved with me, I, I always feel now, I feel very fortunate and very lucky to have felt that. And uh, it's it didn't look like that for a long period of the game, you know. But when we did take, when we did start to exert control on on yourselves like it was a wee bit like Liverpool last night I suppose they looked out of shape in the first half but when they did get control and we were we were comfortable even though we weren't pulling away um, and then in your case I think just a bit of doubt crept in you know you, you, you knew you had the talent and you knew you had the beating up but you just couldn't get that score that was bringing it back to level and yeah, look we were fortunate it's a one point victory uh, and again as I say we were we were very privileged, but good memories, you know. But I'm getting old now, I shouldn't be forgetting these things. And I'm, I'm, I'm it's 20 years this year, Tomas. Do you know what I mean? 20 uh, years, yes, yeah. you wouldn't think it, you wouldn't. I would say, I would, I'd say seven or eight. But, would you uh, do it again, Benny? Would you go like I often think if you had if you were as fit and as eager and as lean as you were at the very beginning, Benny, would you again? I think I probably would because I think. It, I think I, I always, I love sport. I love all sport. I, uh, I play golf, I play tennis. I, I, I would take anybody. 
I think I got a bread into me in my club when a young age from great from great club men and I went to St. Coleman's and I met brilliant coaches in St. Coleman's, you know, I went to the ranch then and I met the legendary Jim McKeever who coached us to a Sigerson. So I, I all while I was very lucky, I, I had the best people over me, if you know what I mean, and the best of managers and the best of coaches. And whatever uh, grain of competitiveness that I had in me, they, they, they honed it and they, they kept at it. And like, I'd love to be a goalkeeper in the modern game, Thomas. I think, uh, I think I am very, I, I might need to be back in after one of my attacks or something like that there, but I would love that, that, that the way that these goalkeepers are pivoting now and are moving out. And uh, I had good feet as well, so I would have liked, I would have liked that, uh, I would have liked the chance to score a point every now and again. Any man that made it at soccer would, would have to have to enjoy the modern game, Billy. Uh, what was I going to say? I was going to say another thing. I often think about, like, we were coached well, but the way the modern game is played and then how, how teams drift back, I suppose it was starting around that time, but it's brought to another level. The amount of coaches are on a team, the amount of s and I often think, Jesus, I would have loved to got a, a, a two months of that training and mm. see how you were after it and how could you compete. Like, are the Dubs, since you've retired, that Dublin team and what they've achieved, do you see any team, Benny, ever doing what they've done? I, I, don't, I, I don't see it. I, I, and it's, it. It wasn't the fact that they did it. It was the longevity of it all. And here, and they lost players all along, key players. And yet they were able to fill those holes so red. You know, when you talk about the likes of Brian Fenton, you know, you <laughs> take to know how many games, like the man, the man was, we, we, we had to cope with all those things. We had to cope with the disappointments. You know, those Mondays after big games when you want to put, cocoon yourself away from the world for about two or three weeks. A man was in an ever raiding uh, a bubble of enjoyment, you know what I mean? I can only imagine what he was like after the beat last year. I don't know. I'd love to be in a fly on the wall there to see how he, but there's a documentary in there maybe. But, you know, I suppose sport throws all of these things at you. And I suppose the the manner of the man is how you cope with it all and how, how you get going on the bus uh, when we go into the character day of the day after O2. And, you know, uh, obviously the pack was 90. And I saw McGrain and McGee up at the front of the bus. What are they? Do you know what I mean? And I walked over and put my arm to him and I says, well, that's, well, we're going to have some wake of it. And McGrain just says, uh, mm, one's good, but we need to be thinking about next year again. And I was going to ask, sweet mother of God, would you take a day off for Christ's sake? But that's the type of the two men we were talking about. And they were analysing how, how we could do this again, you know, the day after. Whereas I, it wouldn't have been in my, it wouldn't have been in my first thought. I'd be thinking, where are we going on a holiday? Where trip going to be? To me, that's the mentality, and we needed, we needed the mentality like like that as well. And as I said before, it takes thirty different characters. But I don't know if it'll ever be achieved, Moss, that, that level of having to reinvent yourself every October, November, you know, and you know they would have been. Every team would have been training in September. They were getting off probably to Christmas, you know, and then they'd have to go again. Dublin were going again and again. And it's um, to do what they did with the range of players. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know if it'll ever be done again. Yeah, I don't. I hope it's not done by Dublin and you have it. No. <laughs> <laughs> do you, would your rivalry be, would your rivalry be more with Cork or more with Dublin, do you reckon? <clears throat> Paul, you always say the two dates you always keep in your, your diary would be the Munster final and the All Ireland. It would be, Cork would be the main one. And it is, a lot of people are playing it down and it's in Parky Rin um, this weekend. And I'm going to go into it. I'm, I'm living in Cork. Yeah. But yeah, Cork would be always be the, the one. Like I often think above Tyrone, they have Donegal on one side of them, they have Armagh on the other side of them, the Derry yeah. above them, they have enemies everywhere. Whereas we're off to the left, we have Cork, that'd be it, that'd be the big one. Um, but yeah, that, that rivalry is huge. But it's, it's rivalries. And I know that's the one argument I always agree with to keep the provincials, is that those rivalries, and only for all striking the provincials be gone long ago. Um, I um, what, what do, you, do you know the other thing? The, the one thing I, that 
And I wasn't going to ask this question at all. Do you know the one thing? If Armagh lose, like I, I, I can say that I love watching Cork win in All Ireland, but whatever it is up the north, yeah. like you always had a very, very strong Railway Cup team. And you all played like you were playing, like you were a club. You all yeah. had this kind of respect for each other. How was that? Was that a kind of a, an unwritten thing? Support the boys, whoever, whoever goes will support them. Yeah. I don't know about that. You <laughs> <laughs> know what I mean? I, I think, uh, listen, I, I get on generally with everybody, you know. I don't, I don't fall out with anybody. I don't sledge, you know. I, I did get sledged now by a lot of Throne supporters. Uh, it, it, the, the chant used to be, it rained and sat on fastered. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, no, I, I listen, I, you know, there's, there, was, there was a picture of me and Canavan coming off after a, a drawn championship match and two of us throwing around each other and laughing over what had happened during the game. I think I might have, uh, he went for a drink at the bottom. I might have scored it on him, but the supporters were to kill me. Like the Canavan was laughing, you know. But then, um, Faye Devlin and, and boys like that there that played for Tyrone, I I would have I would have been straight in after the match in with them, you know. And now I'm not saying it was it was that friendly, and we had awesome offers. Yeah, which is with them. I remember uh, I talked about it that night, uh, the, the first match under lights in Castlebany between our man Tyrone on, on January night. Peter Cannon had his first game and I was having my first game and the melee broke out. I mean, you know the challenge, man, there's nobody there, there's no phones. So whatever you wanted to do, Tomas, you did it. And Harry McClure and Mark Grimley fought for about 10 of 15. And it was like a, it was like a scene out of a Second World War movie, you know. And the only two people who went fighting were me and me, God. And we were at college together, you see. So I ran over to him and started throwing him about a wee bit. And he was hanging on to my lapels and he said... He said, swing me round, swing me round, swing me round, have a look. So, and he was going, oh, jeez, look, oh, I said, yeah, you swing me round, you swing me round, right? So this, this row, the game was abandoned, the row went on for another 20 minutes, and I remember going into the changing rooms, and it was like a scene, and it was like a scene out of a World War movie where, you know, they'd all come back, and there was blood and muck, and it was a January night, and it was snowing, like, and I looked at, they all stopped and looked at me. I was wearing a white jersey, white shorts, white socks, and I looked like an advertisement for personal. I was that plain. And I remember John Grimley saying, did you not get involved in the row? And me panicking, going, how am I going to get myself out of this? And Leo me, oh, no, Jesus, Tony was, Tony was pucking the head of Canada when I saw him out of the corner. <laughs> so, you know, that, that rivalry, you know, whilst I make light of it, it was many a many a, a scoreless battle and all that stuff. Uh, but when people talk about those things now, that's the way it was, and that's you know uh, it was part and parcel of it. You know we we had some very wrong types of thrown over the years and challenge matches went down that maybe didn't get finished as well. But we all meet now. We all share a point, and we all we all look back with rose tinted glasses and brilliant we were. <laughs> I love you. Benny, I could, you're one of the best characters I've ever come across in terms of in any sport and in, uh, in, in any walk of life. I, I really appreciate you coming on uh, tonight and um, I wish you all the best going forward. Um, I, before I leave you go, I, I, I'm trying this thing. Um, yeah. The Bomber and Ogie, they always kind of just hop two names and you have to answer with one name. Yeah. You'll, you'll get it straight away when I... When I this game... Bomber Nogi, believe you me. <laughs> so if I said to you, uh, Clifford or Con Callahan? Clifford. McGinney, Seamus Moynihan. McGinney. Jack O'Brien Fenton. Jack O. Francie or Philly? Francie. <laughs> Otherwise, if I meet him in Cross, he'd bought me. <laughs> Canavan or McConville? I'm never going to be Philly. <laughs> Canavan or McConville? Oh, jeez, you passed it. Canavan. <laughs> I think McConville's twisted. <laughs> I tell you what, I, will, um, I, I was talking to McConville lately and I think we'll have a game of golf somewhere and we'll give you a shout and we'll have a bit of a laugh. Um, Benny, it was a, 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 we needed a strong opener for the, the air grid, Coral Etamas, and by God, you gave it to us. I enjoyed it. I could have stayed on all night. Uh, we'll be back again next Thursday night with another guest, but uh, 
They have a tall orders to keep you up with, with, with Benny. So, Benny, go to meet him and I will talk to you soon. Ah, have a great time. Enjoy every minute of it. All the best. <laughs> Thanks again to our sponsor, Airgrid. Proud supporters of the GAA Football Under-20 All-Ireland Championship and key drivers in Ireland's pursuit of a cleaner energy future. Hashtag powering forward.